Step 5. Quantized electromagnetic radiation. The final step in our lesson, and finally we will apply our Dirac solution for the simple harmonic oscillator in quantizing the electromagnetic radiation. So let's remind ourselves of the known results from previous lessons on classical electromagnetic radiation. We know that the mode is an ele elementary plane wave solution of Maxwell's equations in free space. It can be written down in, as follows. The electric field at some position r and time t is given by the following expression. We've got our vector epsilon m, where m labels the mode and epsilon labels the polarization of the electric field. We've got capital epsilon m, which is a function of t, which is our complex uh, electric field amplitude. And then we've got our exponential, uh, 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 um, which gives us uh, the inner product between the wave vector for m, mode m, given by km, dot the uh, position vector r. Normally, we write this capital epsilon t um, as stationary, and we have the time evolution here, but we will see that for the discussion and quantization of electromagnetic field, this form of the electric field is a little bit more appropriate. And we know what are the usual properties of electromagnetic fields that they must satisfy. In particular, they are polarized in such a direction which is uh, always perpendicular to the propagation of the wave given by the k uh, vector here. Uh, the complex amplitude capital Epsilon M is given by this following expression. So we've got our amplitude of our electric field times some uh, uh, complex exponential, which gives us the time evolution of our and oscillations of our traveling uh, plane wave solution. And the frequency of the wave, omega m, is related to the magnitude of the k vector. In particular, omega is equal to c times the magnitude of k. So, the mode m is characterized by its uh, um, polarization and also the direction in which it's propagating, given by k, which in turn gives us the omega. But this just gives us the structure of the field. There's another important quantity associated with the field, which is its state, and that's expressed here by this capital epsilon. This is a very nice um, correspondence with classical pendulum. The polarization and the vector k give you only the plane in which your pendulum is swinging, and the frequency of the oscillations. But it doesn't tell you where the pendulum is found at time t. For that, you have to compute the position x. And that's what this capital epsilon uh, m of t does. So a mode, to characterize a mode, we need the polarization vector, we need the k vector, as well as we need the state of the mode given by epsilon t. And knowing the, uh, uh, knowing the uh, um, electric field, we can immediately, using Maxwell's equations, compute the magnetic field as well, given by the following expression, where the important part is that the magnetic field is also perpendicular uh, to the direction of propagation, as well as it's perpendicular to the direction of the E field. And we can check that the dynamics of the field, in other words, the dynamics of this complex uh, amplitude, uh, ap capital Epsilon, is given by the following equation. And you can recognize this equation as the equation of a simple harmonic oscillator, as we would expect because we are considering simple elementary harmonic plane waves. Now, in order to quantize the electric field, we said that we must find pairs of conjugate dynamical variables. What are they here? We saw what they were in the, in the example of a massive uh, simple harmonic oscillator. Here it's not so obvious. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite our electric field a little bit. In particular, we introduce a new complex electric field amplitude. So this capital Epsilon M, we're going to rewrite as follows. We're going to introduce uh, I times some, some uh, uh, scalar. This scalar is as yet undetermined but we will see what's a suitable choice for uh, E1 later, times l alpha mt. Alpha m is really the thing that's evolving in time, and it's given by the following. 
1 over square root of 2 h bar times qm plus i p m. The question now is, what are these real parts of alpha? What is q and what is p? And also, why are we introducing h bar here? After all, we're talking about classical electromagnetic fields. Well, we know that we are going to quantize, and in fact, this choice of alpha simplifies the expressions much later on. So please just accept it for now, but later on you will see that the expressions that we obtain for the Hamiltonian and for the electric field will be a lot simpler. So, the energy of the, of, of the field inside a small volume is given by the following expression. It's the energy density of the field times the volume uh, um, in which the field is enclosed. Evaluating this integral with these substitutions and this uh, new notation that we introduced over here, we obtain this following expression. We obtain that the energy inside a small volume is given by 2 times permittivity of free space times the quantization volume or the volume in which the electromagnetic field is enclosed times this new constant which you haven't uh, specifically written down yet, E1 squared, times the magnitude of our new complex electric field amplitude alpha squared. As we said, this Vm is a quantization volume. We are going to discuss the meaning of this volume at a later stage. This E1, on the other hand, is known as one photon amplitude. Why this terminology? Again, it will become obvious when we talk about single photons and detection of single photons. But for now, we notice that since we are squaring E1, this choice makes sense. In particular, it simplifies our expression a little bit, and we obtain the following that the energy inside a small volume, in terms of our newly introduced complex electric field amplitude alpha, is given by this. h bar times the frequency of the mode omega m times the magnitude of alpha m squared. And in terms of these uh, uh, quantities qm and pm, which we haven't really written down explicitly yet, we obtain the following expression. Can you recognize this expression from the previous two steps? It's in fact an expression for the energy of a simple harmonic oscillator. Now we are starting to see the connection between simple harmonic oscillations and electromagnetic radiation. But still we are in the realm of classical physics. We still need to apply our canonical quantization process. So let's check what are the dynamics for our real part of alpha and the imaginary part of alpha, which are denoted by qm and pm. Taking the time derivative of qm and applying Hamilton's equations, we get the following. We get dq by dt is equal to omega times p. Similarly, dp by dt is equal to minus omega times q. Maybe you can already recognize the equations of a simple harmonic oscillator. Yes, they should be. Combine them together, we see that the complex uh, uh, field amplitude, alpha m, obeys the following dynamical equation, which agrees with what we said a few slides ago. In other words, using q and using p as our canonically conjugate pair of dynamical variables and checking uh, what type of dynamical equations they obey, we recover known dynamics. In other words, q and p are canonically conjugate. So now we are in a position to quantize our uh, electromagnetic radiation. We introduce the new operators q and p, which satisfy the commutator relation. The commutator of q and p in mode m is equal to i h bar. And we've got our quantum Hamiltonian h bar given by the following expression, where we replace q and p with their quantum operators q hat and p hat. And now what we can do is we can go back to Dirac and introduce the creation and annihilation operators in terms of the q hats and p hats for the mode m, given here. This allows us to rewrite our Hamiltonian as follows. The Hamiltonian for a single mode of electromagnetic radiation is given by h bar times omega m, the frequency of the mode, times the number operator a dagger a plus a half, our simple harmonic oscillator Hamiltonian, which we saw in the previous step. So, 
please remember these, um, these expressions, they will be very important. Now that we have quantized our electromagnetic radiation, in the next lesson we will start to consider its quantum properties. See you there.